So you've got your website designed in Sketch, Figma, XD, whatever. Now it's time to turn it into a real live website. What do we do now? That's what we're going to discuss in this video. Stay tuned. <laughs> Hey everybody, what is up? Ron Segal here. Welcome back to the free web design course. So last few episodes, we've designed a website. We even made it responsive. And today I want to talk about how to take that design and prepare it, export the assets and make sure you have everything you need so that you can either develop it yourself with Webflow or outsource to other designers or whatever platform that you're actually going to use to build that website. Here's what you need. Here's how to take your actual design and transmit it to make sure that it's ready for development. So state number one, the first stage that we need to do is maybe you actually haven't finished designing. So even though you have your whole page and layout set up, I'm not really sure that you remembered to design all the different states. So let's jump into here. Here's a website that I designed and this is actually built in sketch. And what you need to see here is what I've added here is what actually happens when you hover over an item, right? It changes the color, right? There's a hover state here and some kind of a navigation opens up. So what you need to do at this stage where you have basically your whole design setup is start thinking about all the different scenarios of hover states when things change color or things open up. And you wanna make sure that these ones are designed as well. As well, there's also besides the very obvious hover state, there's also the focus state, which is, you know, for people who work with um, either voice activation or keyboards, they click tap, 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 and then you can actually see how an, a menu navigation is selected. We're going to talk about this a little bit more when we talk about accessibility, but this is also a state that you need to de de design for. And so in your file, you need to start adding up all these different scenarios. So the people who are going to develop this, whether it's you or somebody else, are going to know what to do and how to make each of these buttons and elements functional. So this is the first state. Now, the second thing you want to make sure that before you start moving this into development, you actually have all the styles here. And we talked a few times about styles, but you want to make sure that everything is set up properly because somebody is going to have to design this, uh, develop this, and they need to make sure that, you know, they're, they're not going to create infinity amounts of style. There is going to be consistency within your design. And so they need to remember or know how they need to refer to each one of the styles. So if you have a header, make sure it's called H1 and you're using that throughout your design. If you have, you know, H2 or H3 down the line, you want to make sure that all these styles are being used so they can be referred back to and make sure that there's consistency consistency throughout your design. So that's kind of talking about how to prepare the files that are, um, you know, the developer uh, is going to refer back to. Now let's talk about the second state, which is basically exporting the assets from these files to files that you can use to develop the website. So again, whether you're going to do this yourself or somebody else going to do this, you need to export the assets, right? In asset by assets, I mean images, icons, animation, all that kind of stuff. So let's actually talk about what are the actual types of files that you're going to be using. Basically, we have three types of files. The, the first one is SVG, which is a vector file. So everything that is kind of a, an icon or something similar to this, which is a vector illustration or an icon, you can see here that it's set to export, right, as an SVG. So each one of these softwares, it doesn't matter if it's Sketch or a Figma or XD, they all have what format you would like to export this file. And the best, if you can, is to export this as an SVG file because this means it's a very sh small s file size, which means the website is going to load super fast. And because it's vector, you can scale it and you can actually use it in whatever size you want. So when it's possible, you're going to export as an SVG. Um, for different types of images like this one, which is just a full on image, probably we're going to use a JPEG. So we're going to choose this uh, image, probably this one, and we're going to set it 
This one is set to PNG, but probably we're gonna set it to JPEG. And the reason is PNG is used when we have transparency. This image right here actually doesn't have a transparency. It's just a background all along. And JPEG files are actually smaller than PNG files. Um, so this one, we're probably gonna use a JPEG to, um, to export it, and we're gonna actually set the size to 2X, which means that we're going to export it two times the size of the screen, and that's because in a lot of the screens these days, um, whether it is you know high definition websites or on mobile phones, we have a pixel density that is two times the size of the image. So we're actually exporting the image much bigger, two times bigger, and mo when when it's going to be compressed down, the density of the pixels is going to be two times higher, and it's going to be sharp and not pixelated on really good screens. That also means that the image is going to be um, bigger, and that's why we're going to need to compress it, and we'll talk about that in a second. So the last type of images is probably something like we have here, right? So here I have three kind of layers of this chip thing and I'm actually going to animate them right so I need to export each one of them right now they're in a group but actually I need to exp export each one of them as a PNG file because as you can see they are transparent and when I will animate them one on top of another I want to make sure that we see the transparency so these ones are going to have to be PNG files so once we have um, exported the assets so SVG file as we said they are already small file size, but for PNGs and JPEGs, we're gonna have to compress them to make sure that the file is as optimized as possible. So the website again, loads fast. So my favorite website for this is called tinypng.com. It's actually a free website. You can drop in your files here. And let's just, just to show you how this actually works. So let's say I'm taking this, image which is going to be rather large I, I'm, I can probably say that it's going to be pretty large let's call this background and let's see what it was exported at and what's it's going to be compressed so if i so note the original image is 1.2 megabytes i'm going to upload this here and let's see what this gives me so 1.2 megabytes is quite a lot and it was compressed to 56 kilobyte which is, means that it's it was compressed 95 percent of the file size was compressed so i can just download it here let's see if we actually so i'll call this background compressed and let's see if we can even you know see the difference so this is the original one this is the compressed one there's a i don't know if you can see there's a tiny tiny shift of color but quality wise you don't really see the difference so this is super, super important because as you said, once you'll do all of them, and this is kind of a manual process at the moment, but you know, there, there's no better way to do this because as you can see, the compression of the actual design software is not that good. Um, so this is super, super helpful and you wanna do that. So now basically you have all your websites assets exports and you have the file as a good reference with all the states of the design so now you're actually ready to either hand this off to a developer or start developing it yourself using something like webflow and we'll touch upon that on the next video so hope that was useful make sure you're subscribed for the next videos and we'll see you on the next one Bye bye